guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So, just recently, while well, recording this video, I started a contest where I'm offering up a couple of games and a cool Pac-Man mug. And the two games that I've started to uh, or that I have are Choplifter, which I've already done a video on this one to show it off and uh, you know, just to play it a little bit. It's actually a pretty fun game. I mean, this is the Atari 7800 version, so you need an Atari 7800 to play it. But, I mean, still, it's a, it's a cool game. The other game that I have up is for Pressure Cooker. And so this is all for one, you know, one contest. You get all three. And uh, I thought, what better time to kind of play these games than now? Just to kind of show off the games that you can win. So, Pressure Cooker is a... Well, it's on the Atari Age website. If you go there, you can, you can see that this game's uh, rated as a scarce game. Meaning that you don't see it very often. Um, it wasn't like Pac-Man or Space Invaders where every store had every, you know, tons of copies of it. So, and I think, you know, it just came out during that time where, uh, like 83 is when our video game crash in North America happened and, and all crap when, you know, started to happen. And so this one was a little bit more of a rare title. It's not overly expensive rare, but I mean, it's still, you don't find a whole ton of them. And so I thought this is a good time to actually give this game a play. Uh, you can see that it's got really bad, uh, that, that's like the plaque stuff from the, um, the glue. Now a lot of Activision games look like this, uh, t especially today where the, you know, it just, it was a bad glue that they used for, for back in the day. It was kind of a probably cutting cost measure. And uh, as you can see, it didn't work out. But I mean, this is not too bad. I mean, you can still see the label. You can still see the, the game in the middle. There's a little bit of, you know, whitening there. But the label's fine. It's intact. And, uh, you know, even if you were to buy this game brand new and pull it out of the package, you'd probably see this kind of placking happening anyways. But yeah, I wanted to get to the game because Pressure Cooker was one that I was really interested in. I did pick it up um a while ago actually I, I picked up uh, you know there was one time where i picked up a huge lot of atari games and this was one of them and i, I put it into my atari and i didn't really know what was going on so I, I kind of put it away for a while and i thought i'll i'll catch up to it later and i sort of forgot i had this and i ended up buying another copy of it uh, i saw another one in the store and i was like oh wow pressure cooker and i bought it and then i was like oh crap i think i have this one and i do which is why it's now part of this uh, giveaway. But anyways, I took some time to actually learn how to play this. And I'm still not good at it. I mean, I'm not the greatest. Um, and But anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still run through it and show you what it's like. Just so if anybody's in the contest or if anybody else is just watching this, they're curious about this game and they want to learn how to play it, I'll kind of give a good run through. Anyways, let's play Pressure Cooker on the Atari 2600. Okay, so we got Pressure Cooker, uh, Activision, copyright 1983. Um, pretty standard, I guess, uh, Activision screen where they just kind of go to the, uh, you know, what's going on in the game. There's no real title screen. Um, you know, I'm okay with that. I, I always like it when there is a title screen. It just adds a little bit to it, but that's okay. And as you can see, we got um, our little furnace up here, or, or oven, I should say, not furnace, oven. Where they cook the burgers and drop it down on the conveyor belt. So I kind of like the uh, layout of this. It's kind of neat. Like you got this conveyor belt. You got the burgers and everything. This is the chute where all the stuff comes out of. And that's our uh, area there that tells us what burgers we need. So I'm going to uh, reset the game. So this is on a setting where the music plays at the beginning. And then I think it only plays again between rounds. That doesn't drive me crazy. All right, so, oops. So we, you have to like kind of grab the right ingredients. This is not the right one. And it kind of tells you down here in the, uh, you know, this, these are the orders that it wants. So there's like, it looks like a tomato, onion, lettuce, cheese. And so like I'd have to put a lettuce in there to fulfill that order. And then I go down the screen and this is the assembly room. Essentially where the burger gets packaged and then it tells you the glowing red line there is where to put the burger So the red one so I drop it in there and you'll see it go down and there we go. We got a point and then we got to continue on um, 
I believe to bounce the uh, the product back, you need to hold down the button, which is what I wasn't doing. It's okay. This is the onion, and uh, so again, it's down there. So I go to the uh, green one, I think. Yeah. And we got another point. Uh, it's not good if it uh, if it hits the thing here. So you kind of have to pay attention. This is a game that really requires a lot of paying attention. What's going on? What's happening? It's kind of like working in a real restaurant, and you know, it's it's just really what I thought about when um, when I was when I first tried playing this game. Was you know, working in a restaurant, you kind of think about all the orders that are coming in, and you're kind of thinking ahead of time to start making things ahead of time. And this is kind of the same idea. You got to think about all the orders. Let's give this a good shot this time. Not bad music. We don't need that. Oh, I did need that. Okay. Uh, again, like I said, you kind of have to pay attention to the other orders. Um, not just the one that's on top or anything like that. So, I think this is a green one. So, very kind of like, in a sense, oops, I needed that. Uh, like burger time, but instead of being chased by anything, it's really just a case of organizing yourself and knowing what the next order is. Almost like actually working in a burger joint. <laughs> and if, you, if you've ever been to a, a, a McDonald's or wherever, okay, I don't need that. And uh, they've screwed up your order. You know, you kind of, you kind of understand that that's that's pretty much what happens in, in these things, right? Like, there's all these orders coming in, and you could easily lose your mind. Now, I've never worked in a McDonald's, but I have worked in a Wendy's uh, for quite a while when I was, you know, just before college time, and even during college, I was working in a Wendy's, and, and to some extent after college, while I was looking for my job. Whoops, that wasn't good. I worked in a Wendy's, so, and it was because I worked at that, whoops, it was because I worked at that one for quite a while that it was just easier for me to just go back and, and say, you know what, I need, I need some uh, extra time, uh, extra coin while, whoops, I think I broke the burger there, I need some extra coin while I'm looking for a job, so, um, you know, I was able to get in pretty easily because I already knew the people working there and uh, my friend was the manager there, so it was just an easy job. And you know, come, thinking about it, I actually enjoyed working at Wendy's. I, I know there were some times where it just really sucked, and uh, you know, it is a little stressful. But every job's like that, right? Like, no job's gonna be 100% fun all the time. There's gonna be stress, and there's gonna be times where it drives you crazy. But I'd say working at Wendy's is probably one of the one of the, you know. Fun jobs I've, I've had in my life. Oops. Okay, I'm just breaking all the pieces. That's not good, by the way. That's not good. <laughs> okay, I got a piece of cheese. I don't need that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that there. Oops. Okay. Yeah, kind of screwing up here. Let's try that again. This does kind of require some good concentration. Uh, I'll have to give it that. I think that's the problem when you try and talk while you're uh, while you're playing. Ooh, I could have grabbed that one. You kind of have to identify the pieces, too. The pieces of the burger. To know what it is. I don't need... Oh, I should have bounced it back. But if you're into, like, these challenging games, like... That do require some good mental... <laughs> mental math, essentially. Oh, I don't need that. Oh, well. We'll just put that together and go here. You know, it's it's a good it's a good game to actually work on your memory skills and and my memory skills are bad. I, I'm always the first to admit that. I forget everything. Even when I write things down I forget things. <laughs> you know, I, I write it down, but then I forgot I wrote it down kind of thing. I'm not the best when it comes to memories. Okay, so there I dropped it there. That was bad. Ooh. Okay, I don't need that. Okay, I keep forgetting. I have to push the button when I want to reject a piece. Oh well, I got cheese in my hand. 
Now, there is a good strategy where you can you can decide like, yes, uh, this piece will be needed at some point, and hope it's not going to leave the assembly line. But really, what I should be doing is this: bouncing back the rejected parts <laughs> until I get the piece I need, like this lettuce. I need that, and then I need that bun, and now I go down here. So you can see what I mean by paying attention, and I don't need that. Uh, I don't need them. And you don't want it to be bouncing off of the conveyor belt. That's bad, so. Oh, I needed that. Whoops. Okay, I need the lettuce. And now on the on the harder skill sets, this is like skill set one. So this is fairly easy. And if I wasn't talking, I'd probably be doing a little bit better. Oops. But I mean this is on the easiest setting. And uh, when you start getting into the higher settings, let's, let's try it. I believe it goes odd numbers are player one games, so... And it tells you there, it's got a little chef hat to tell you there's one, one player. And two chef hats to tell you there's two player. Uh, so let's go to seven. Now it's going to be going really fast, <laughs> probably. You gotta be thinking like three steps ahead, which I'm not gonna be able to do, but regardless, let's just do this. Okay. So, ooh, ooh, it's gotta go in the blue. Okay. Uh, so we need, okay, we don't wanna use that one. Uh, that's gonna go in the green. I think I set this properly to be on the right one, but uh, oops, we d we do need oh we don't need that okay. But as you can see, you can kind of get into a rhythm once you, once you start getting into that rhythm. But as it gets faster and faster, and parts start falling off, you lose demerit points and stuff like that. It's tricky at that point blue overall pretty clever game I mean oops and that's what Activision was really known for making really nice colorful fun graphically pleasing whoopsie and challenging games so as you can see it's actually fun I mean if, if that's your thing now I, I understand that this is not going to be for everybody some people might not like it because it's not a game that you can just kind of throw in and just kind of just play. Like it does require concentration. It does require memory skills. And if you really like those types of games, you're really going to enjoy this. Um, I mean, the Atari had a few games that were like uh, you can literally play them blindfolded in in your sleep. This one, not so much. You're going to have to pay attention. And you notice when I was playing. Uh, I was talking and stuff like that, and I was kind of like goofing up, uh, you know, missing up some steps where I needed to bounce an ingredient back and I just let it hit me, or I grabbed it and I shouldn't have grabbed it. Um, but that's, you know, you could figure that out. Once you seriously start playing this game and you're actually paying attention, you could do things like, you know, call out the ingredients as it's coming or uh, look down in your, your the menu thing of, of what people want and, and the recipes or whatever. And just say I want that and then when it gets into the packaging machine I mean that's not hard you you just got to look at the color that's blinking and then you drop it into the right color so unless you're playing on a black and white TV which I highly do not like recommend you do not use <laughs> for this game because you need to know your color schemes but other than that I mean the game is fun it's a very different take on taking the whole burger making process from Burger Time, which is still a great game. Burger Time I love. Burger Time is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, you know, especially on the Intellivision. Uh, it's like one of my most favorite games. Uh, and so this is taking a different stance of saying, you know, instead of focusing on running away from angry pickles, angry wieners and angry tomatoes or uh, uh, eggs and all that other stuff or whatever's chasing you in Burger Time. Um, this is more of let's build like like actually run a restaurant and kind of fulfill orders so it's kind of fun and this is different for its day like i don't think there was anything really like this on the atari at all at the during those times you know 83 
Uh, probably some computer games maybe, but nothing like this. Anyways, yeah. So this is Pressure Cooker. Let me know what you think of the game. Uh, like I said, this is a contest that I have running right now. As if, if you're watching this video during the launch or during the time of the contest. Uh, so this is going to be for Pressure Cooker. It's also going to be for Choplifter for the uh, 7800. Which, you know, if you have a 7800, you can play this anyways. And this cool Pac-Man mug, which I'm also throwing in there. Because I thought, you know, just a contest with two games seems a little bit skimpy. Let's throw in a cool Pac-Man mug. Anyways, yeah, hope you liked the video. Check out my previous video on the uh, Choplifter and on the contest if it's during the time period. And uh, if you want to join, uh, throw your, your, you know, throw your hat in the ring and see if you can win. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.